All right. Um, so I wanted just to make a video that goes over the the top level kind of architecture of the simulation and how to launch it and some of the uh, kind of you know some of the stuff that's going on in the background. Uh, so this is the uh, these are the three primary environments that are going to be uh, basically running all at the same time and. Each one of these spaces is kind of is basically independent. So, in order for them to communicate with each other, they have to actually there has to be plugins involved. Uh, but that's pretty much taken care of. Uh, I just wanted to kind of go over how it works because uh, it it can help with troubleshooting and stuff sometimes. Um, so you have this flight controller, which is a the same hardware which is put on drones to make them fly waypoint missions and things like that. Uh, but it can also just as well be used for ground vehicles or fixed wing aircraft or boats and submarines. <laughs> but so it's just, it's a generic motion, uh, motion controller. And then you com you command it through this protocol called Mavlink. And in real life, it's a, just a UART serial port, but uh, when it's being simulated, it's just gonna be, uh, serial packed over UDP, but it should be the same. And so this, this firmware runs and then it's getting its sensor data from the simulator and then it's uh, publishing the motor outputs. Uh, so the flight controller thinks it's actually driving something. Uh, the gazebo simulation has two major components one of them is the world or the scenario. The other one is the robot itself. Uh, and so there's two different files, there's a world file and a robot model file. And uh, the world is real simple. It's just got a sun and a ground plane, which you have to have those. That it's just, other than that, it's just got the, the ground box for the uh, coarse texture. And then it's also got the robot model itself. And within the robot model scripting is where you define all these plugins. It's where you add sensors and then tell it what to publish it as, as far as like when it gets published to ROS. Uh, and I can just go ahead and launch this. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the, just, just this, the uh, PX4 simulation. Let's see. Actually, I'm gonna go there in a file browser. So from your home folder, there's two there's two main folders that are important. There's uh, this folder, which is just a, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but then you also have this random source folder. And so what this is, is this is where the uh, the PixHawk firmware is, the PX4 firmware. And let's see here, you don't have to worry about this, but I'm just gonna show you where the actual application is. Uh, so this is where the PX4 simulator lives, kinda. And that's the actual, that's the application. Uh, let me open this guy up. So we're, we're in this folder. And I'm gonna boot up the firmware. PX4, firmware. Um, this is a really long command, and I apologize. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the first, the first argument is just the the root directory of the firmware. And then this is gonna be a really long file path. Bear with me. comes after that. Always hates to come through this. Uh, then it's that, right? Then it's this. That, and then it's like a rover. Ah, there we go. 
Yeah, that sucks. And I'm 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 launching all this stuff independently uh, here, but I'll show you how to launch it all with a script, and that's how you're actually going to be working with it. But this is just so you can get an idea of kind of what's going on. Uh, so all right, so it boots up. Pix4 starting. It says waiting for initial data on the UDP on from the flight simulator. So let's start that to proceed. So we can actually do that. Uh, let me get out of here, go back home. And so you'll probably never even go in that folder because I'll, I'll, I'll have it set up and everything. But uh, I'll just go to our workspace. So this is the Ross workspace. This is the root of where all of our software lives, uh, all of our scenarios and scripting and gazebo world and model files, all our Ross nodes and source code is all right here. Um, let's see here. Uh, the only important, there's, there's four important folders. The rest of them are less important. Uh, and those are the launch folder, models. Well, in terms of just gazebo, I'll start there. We'll just, the models and the worlds folder are pretty important. These are all the different simulated uh, scenarios and stuff. A lot of them are copies. Uh, but here's some different uh just different models different uh, iterations of the platform and the other two important ones are the source directory so this is where all the source code is for all the ross nodes and uh the launch folder so models and worlds is kind of like has to do with gazebos and then like source and launch is all ross and the launch folder has these scripts and these make life so much easier because they basically launch all sorts of stuff at once uh, but anyways I'm gonna get back to here open a terminal so let me just start gazebo just to show you what it, what it does Uh, so this is a simulator. It's basically just a game engine or a physics engine. And it runs for the sole purpose of being there so that we can create the sensor data. And also simulate the, uh, the driving of the robot. But uh, as you see, there's nothing here. Uh, it's because we didn't load a world file. Um, and you just see some of the default models. Just got a ground plane. I guess the sun's not default after all, huh? But uh, you'll see that there's no option to open a world. And, and this is kind of frustrating with Gazebo. Uh, it is a, you can think of it as a run only system, Like you can't actually edit anything in here. This is just to run it. So you have to do everything in scripting. Uh, so in order to load a world file, we can uh, see here, Gazebo. It's just the first argument. It's in the world's directory. Oh, worlds with an S. Uh, I think this is the last one I was working on. Uh, I'm about to add in an uh, optional thing here. And this is something you have to do so that all the raw stuff will, so it all works together. Uh, it's another esoteric path, but you don't have to worry about this because it'll be scripted. Gazebo uh, Ross API. Nice. Uh, before I launch this, I actually have to do one more thing, which is to run this, uh, command called ROS core and it basically acts as like the DNS server for all the ROS namespace stuff. It makes sure all of the stuff that's published goes where it's supposed to go and vice versa and it'll just crash if you try to run it without it. And you typically you can just run it and then just leave it running. Uh, but uh, let's launch this and you'll see that the flight simulator on, up here, the firmware begins to boot up.
So it's booted and uh, it's good to go. You'll see that now uh, this is our world. And it's empty, it's empty for now because I'm just uh, testing path navigation and stuff like that. But um, let's see here. So this is just kind of like a stand-in platform that we're using. Uh, I'll show you the camera. So this is uh, one of the virtual sensors that's got a visualization option. So you can see that image down there uh, will be published to ROS so that you can use it with uh, computer vision. Let's see here. And this tool is pretty much a lifesaver. It's got all sorts of debug information because with ROS you have a bunch of different things running, but they're all kind of running in the same space. Space. You can think of it like that. So this lets you kind of debug the entire space. Visualization, image view. Sweet. So yeah, so like all your ROS nodes, if you, or the ones that need this can have access to it. Uh, but I'll go ahead and show you what it means to have a flight controller. So this is Q Ground Control. It's just a, this is standard software that comes with the, these flight controllers. And it's just what you would use for, I don't know, if, if you was doing some kind of commercial mapping or something. So you'll see that immediately, it'll automatically connect up to this virtual uh, instance that's running. And see it says, you know, part. Uh, it's got a new uh, partner. So it actually thinks it's at, uh, it thinks it's on campus. So that's the VBH building, engineering building. Uh, I just got it out here because that makes sense to me. Um, but so yeah, it's a, it's booted up. It thinks it's right there. Uh, and uh, another neat thing is you can see the camera feed right there and Q ground control as well. So that was a new thing with the, uh, the latest update, which is pretty cool. Ultimately useless, but still, it's cool that they did it. Uh, somebody had to write that plug in. Uh, so we're in hold mode, I don't know why, go to mission. So now this, this will arm it. Uh, before I do that, let me Say follow. All right. Um. So now it's doing a mission. And these are waypoints that I just manually placed to uh, just to test the, the pit tuning and stuff on the, like the steering controller. Uh, let's see here. It's actually funny when you go to wireframe, the, uh, the the virtual feed will go to wireframe. So you have to watch out for that if you're testing uh, computer vision stuff. But it works pretty good. It, it right now I know I know this looks bad, right? Okay, but I haven't figured this out. You have to set the first waypoint at least three meters, and there's this parameter for the acceptance radius of as far as like how close you have to get to the actual point. And I didn't want to set that too low. So it always misses that first one. Uh, but these are all pretty much in the right spot. So it nails the rest of them, but I'll, I'll figure that out eventually. That's not necessarily all that important because I'm not quite sure if we're going to use waypoint navigation. I think using a continuous set point would be safer. Because with waypoints, you know, like that behavior where it was just spinning around trying to get to this waypoint is kind of not what we want it to be doing. Um, as far as anything else, go back. Let me open up RQT again just to show you some of the 
to show you that there's there's a hidden kind of global state that uh, and that's the whole reason that this tool exists. That's not very helpful. Cool. So this is just showing you, this is what is happening in ROS right now. You have Gazebo, and it is publishing to ROS all this. Lots of got sensors, uh, but it's cool because you don't only just get the sensor, you also get the, uh, like the reference frame of the sensor where it's at. Uh, all sorts of metadata um, but yeah this is just gazebo running so we don't have any other ROS nodes which are uh, we don't have anything that's like subscribing to this and we're not publishing nothing so nothing's happening uh, which is why when you hide the leaf topics and leaf topics are just they're topics that aren't going anywhere that aren't connected but um that's a pretty good introduction. Um, I'll cut it short there.